Hey, Jeff Rolfing with Everything Boston Whaler. So one of the more common questions that always gets asked on the group forums and other places is, how do I fill holes from screws and other hardware? How do I fill holes from trolling motors that have been mounted in my boat? And how do I fix scratches, chips, and blemishes in the gel coat? I'm gonna take you through the process of how to clean out those holes, prep them, get them ready for filling, and ultimately fill and finish them. I'm going to do it here on my 15 foot center council sport that I have. I got some holes from some old railings from a trolling motor and I have some gel coat damage, some chips and whatnot that I'm going to take you through how to fix. Hopefully you guys will find this tutorial helpful and answers a lot of questions for you guys. Take care and have a great day. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so the products that I use is I start with straight bright white gel coat. I get this from my local fiberglass supply company. I got tints, I have black, brown, and yellow. Those are really the only colors I use to get to desert tan. Um, I do have some that are have a little bit more yellow and a little bit more green. This one's a putty. These are extra pigments that I have as well from other jobs that I've done. These are good if I wanna mix them up and kinda of touch up some areas. I'll mix it with one-to-one -one with a little bit of Evercoat gel paste. Um, but in this case, what I've done is started with the bright white and I've gone through with the black, the yellow and the brown and mixed up a desert tan color um, that's specific to this hull. The reason why I don't always use color match gel coats from Spectrum and other place, well, specifically with Spectrum, when you buy these little kits, um, when they actually have gel coat paste in them, when you open them up, um, they expire pretty quickly. They've got a shelf, shelf life of maybe a couple weeks. So the small kits from Spectrum that you can buy that are similar to these pigments, um, I really don't like them because they go bad pretty quickly. And for large areas and large filling, I just like to have extra gel coat um, on hand. So you can see, I have done about two thirds of this quart into here and then I've colorized it. The reason why I do that and I actually don't start in here is if I'm mixing and I'm mixing and I feel like my color has gotten too dark, I always want to have extra white to go back to. So that's why I pour about two thirds of this into a separate container and use that for mixing color. That's always your stopgap. Um, any cleanup and whatnot, I tend to use acetone. You know, um, this is unwaxed gel coat. I do have wax up there and I added just a little bit. It's about 3% um, wax to the overall volume. What the wax does is helps in the curing process. When the gel coat starts to catalyze and cure, it comes out to the surface and creates a vapor barrier and allows it to cure hard. If you're getting tacky gel coat, the reason why is because you don't have enough wax in the finish. So for me, um, when I'm filling holes with this material, um, if I'm filling holes from the top surface down like I'm doing in the non-skid from where the trolling motor was, typically I'll do two parts of gel coat to one part gel paste. It leaves it a little bit runnier so that when it fits or fills into the hole, it levels out nicely. If I want it to be thicker for filling holes that are like in the side of the gunnels from railings or actually filling um, gouges in the keel and whatnot, I'll do one part to one part to keep it thick and kind of like a peanut butter consistency. So I'll pull some of this out and I'll show you how it mixes up. So one thing, let me grab some of this here, but I do, and I've did this outside and I granted this is inside now, but it's mainly because we've got rain coming is. And, um, I've gone through and right now you can see that it looks a little bit light. I mean, right now it is in a liquid stage. It is um, not catalyzed, but that gets me a good look at the color. And I think once that cures, it's gonna be pretty darn close. Kind of push that around and see the color coming through. I think that'll be pretty good once I get there. Um, what a lot of people don't realize with desert tan is desert tan is a lot more of a putty color than it is a tan. It's a lot more gray than it is brown. Um, so I can't give you guys a true formula. I mean, it really is um, all done 
kind of by guessing in each individual hole. But I do start with black um, to try and get you know the right value, let's say. Um, and this stuff is voodoo. Um, I'll be honest with you, use this sparingly. Whip it in, get the color going, and start to take that white down to a gray. And then I add in the brown and the yellow to get me to kind of that putty color consistency. If it feels a little too warm, a little too red, there's too much brown in it, and you need more yellow to kind of brighten it up. Um, and like I said, always save yourself some white gel coat to go back to if you feel like you've gotten too dark. You can bring that color, that value back up by adding white. Okay, so you can see this gel coat paste from Evercoat. It's like a jelly and also it has great hold capabilities and surfaces that are upside down, that are vertical. And this is why I really like using this product for filling holes in the gunnels that are on vertical surfaces or actually filling um, gouges, scratches that are in the keel. Because you can put this on and it will stick upside down. So, like I said, I typically do like one to one here. So it really doesn't take a whole lot. I'm just going to do a small little mix here. Put some gel coat down there. So you got about a little too much of the gel paste. So we're going to add a little bit more gel coat. Now, because this is a neutral product, and I put these two together, you can see the gel coat gets absorbed right into the gel paste. Oh, it's getting windy out there. But you can see now I've got a product that works really well. Um, holds really well and is the color that I need. So this is why I like using pure liquid um, gel coat with this gel paste because it gets me a product that's spreadable and it goes a long ways. And the other nice thing um, that I like about doing this process is this is great for filling holes but if I have an area that's scratched that I need to fill, I still have liquid gel coat that I can use to spray out over areas if I need to. So this little bit here, I think will be good for us to start filling some of the holes where the railing was. So there you go. So I've gone around to all of the screw holes that you can see here and I've used a countersink bit with the drill bit just slightly out, and you can see, does a nice job of cleaning those screw holes out that have been fractured and whatnot. So I'm gonna do that to this guy here. The other thing you can do is if you have a burr bit like this, that'll work as well. I'll show you how to do that. If the, you have a countersink, it does the exact same thing. So you just wanna clean that out until all the fracturing's gone, and then the hole's ready to go. So you can see up here, there was a trolling motor that was once mounted. It was very sloppily filled. So I'm going through cleaning out what was filled and gonna fill that as well. You can see the holes are pretty big from the hardware. I'm gonna take this burr bit and go around and just flare the edge. So you can see there, Try and keep it as clean as possible. I might have wanted a little bit up to do with the camera in hand. You can see there, you want to clean those holes out as much as possible. Get them so there is no cracking coming out from the edges, what used to be there. And then this is what we're going to fill with. So you want to get that edge flared out so that you have a nice fill that doesn't crack. Now we're going to tape over these, cut these out so that we can fill them, and keep going. So you can see up here there was also something mounted up front. I don't think it was a trolling motor. The whole spacing is too small, but I've been using the countersink bit here. So you can see. You just want to do that so you get a nice clean hole that you're going to fill on the backside. 
open those guys up. I got some cleanup to do on this guy down here. I'm gonna get my Dremel out and kind of clean that up and try and get a nice circular hole. You can see over on that side, I've gone through, cleaned those out and flared them open. Okay, so I'm starting to fill the holes up here in the non-skid as well as I'm gonna fill the holes from the railing over there. Now, I went um, and drilled these open and, you know, there's a little pinhole in there. So I didn't want, you know, all the material that I'm putting in on these fills to get down into the foam. I wanted to create kind of a little plug at the bottom. So I used a little Loctite um, epoxy in these. So make sure that that just filled the bottom so that when I fill it with finished material, it doesn't sink. It always will stay level. What I've done for masking these areas is I've gone and taped off like an octagon around all of these. So it kind of fits somewhat to the diamond pattern here. So we'll tape these off. I've got these guys over here as well from the trolling motor. Tape these off as well. You can kind of see the shapes. And again, I put a little bit of Loctite adhesive, um, actually Loctite Marine Epoxy in here, just to kind of create plugs at the bottom of the existing holes. Now for these areas here and the railings, there are holes here. So what I'm gonna do there is I've got my drill here uh, with my countersink bit again that I've used. All I'm going to do is find those holes. And then that gives me a cutout there for material filling. So I'm just going to go around and put holes in all of these, and then I'll be ready to fill on those vertical surfaces as well. All right, so I have some material here, and all I'm doing is feeding it into the hole, and you want to dab it like this to get all the air bubbles out of it. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to fill each one of these holes like this, level them off, and then we'll be good. All right, done. All right, so these are filled. So now I'm just going to go over the top of them and level them off, which works really well with the tape. It gives me a nice edge to kind of clean up against. I'm gonna do that to all the holes here. And then once it starts to set and starts to get a little tacky is when I'll be able to remove the tape and we'll get a nice edge. All right, you can see here on this four hole side, I've leveled it off and give that, I don't know, probably 20 minutes or so for it to cure. It's pretty hot out, it's in the 90s. So this stuff should kick off pretty quickly. And then I'll show you what it looks like once I pull the tape off. Okay, so this is kicked off enough. You can see it's really tacky. So now what I'm gonna do is Remove all of the tape slowly around there. Come back with a little acetone to clean that up. spot there. The rest of that looks pretty good. So there you go, holes filled. Slowly. There you go. All right. go. Sounds like it's starting to rain on the barn. All right, those guys are filled too. Okay, so I've got my product here. 
Um, I'm actually not going to tape these because they're going to work these a little bit differently. Um, so I'm going to start really just kind of troweling this product on. Fill in the holes. Use that edge to get all the air bubbles out and come over the top of it. Again, fill those holes. Work that in there. You can see because of the consistency of this product, it works really well in staying in those holes. I'm going to need to get a little bit more product in for this guy down here. And come back and fill that guy back over. So I'm probably going to end up with some low spots here. I might need to come back and do a double fill on this. You can see that side over there starting to cure up and look good. All right, so I have filled this area. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to save finishing and whatnot. So I take a very wet rag with acetone on it and go over this area that I filled, wipe that all the way down, get it wet, just kind of work it over the area reason why I do this is I'm trying to save myself from having to wet sand too much in this area. So I'm taking off all of the excess gel coat that I put on here so that when I go to wet sand off this, I'm not sanding too much of the existing gel coat out. Because on an old boat, every little bit of gel coat makes a difference. So I'm just taking all of that material off around it, and then I'll block sand that out, wet sand it, and polish it. Okay, so I got another batch that I'm gonna mix up here. I'm gonna mix this kind of thick. So typically I go one part liquid gel coat to one part Evercoat gel paste. And I'm gonna go a little bit heavier on the gel paste here because I'm doing a um, repair here on the bottom, and this is how you can do keel repairs, keel chips, keel abrasions. But I have an area here that I've really gone and I sanded out. There must have been a screw or something on a hoist. This boat was hoist kept, so screw or a nail or something from the bunk that was rubbing circles in this area scratching back and forth every time the boat was loaded on and off so what i'm going to do is use the gel paste to, <clears throat> to patch this entire area again i didn't sand into any of the fiberglass laminate i just removed all of the chipped out scratched out gel coat so i have one good surface and then i'm going to use the gel paste to fill that so i'll show you how i do that okay so like i showed you before i'm going to take this Mix this up the best I can. <laughs> so you want to kind of break that gel down into the gel coat. So you're going to work it up until it gets into a smooth consistency. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Okay, so the best way to kind of work this together is on your palette. Kind of keep picking it up, putting it back down. Just kind of work all that together. Scrape the edge of your scraper off, feed that back in there. And now you've got a good consistency to be able to fill with. Now this isn't catalyzed yet, but you can see I got a big glob on there. And you can see holding it upside down. It's not sliding, it's not dropping. It's hanging quite well. So that's what I want for filling on the bottom side of a boat. So I'm going to catalyze this and show you how to put it on the bottom. Okay, you can see here, I've been kind of working this on, smoothing it out. Um, let me get my hands out of the way here. So you can see I've kind of gone over that entire area. Now I'm just kind of working, smooth it out. It's 
starting to kick off right now, so I need to be kind of careful here. I don't smear it or smudge it or rub it too much. I just kind of want to glaze it on. So I got that on. I'm probably going to give that like 15 minutes or so, and I'll come back and I'll recoat one more time over some of the low spots. And then I'm going to wet sand that out and polish it. All right, you can see here I'm on my first sanding. This is 150. I've been using the power sander and the block sander here to kind of get this area cleared out, uh, blocked down. You can see this is the area that had some damage from what looked like a bunk or something like that. The boat was lift kept, so I'm assuming that there was like a nail or something that was out on a bunk that kept scratching the bottom. So we filled that with the Evercoat gel coat. And now I'm just kind of blocking the surface down with 150. I'm going to go to 220, 400, 600, 800, and then 1,000, and then polish it out. Okay. <clears throat> so we're on the wet sand in here. I'm on 220. Got my bucket of water over here, so. Get that wet. And with your block. You just sit here and you're just gonna work the surface. Keep polishing that surface down. Like I said, I'm gonna step from 220 here to 400 to 600 to 800 to 1,000 and then we're gonna polish. So here you go. You can see right up in this area here is where that scratches were from the bunk. Got up to a thousand grit and then polished it. So looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna get all of this other staining out of the hall. I'm gonna use some Mary Kate on that and get that whole area cleaned up. But that area of repair looks pretty darn good. Now you can see here was the railing on that side. Railing holes are filled over there. Holes have been filled here for the forward seat as well. So those are the major areas you can see up here in the non-skid as well, the holes that were filled. <clears throat> so that's it, boat's done, cleaned up, polished, and uh, that's how you do gel coat repair.